Welcome to Living Marvelously with me, Lori Jonas. This is the show where we unleash the marvelous potential in every woman. Are you ready to dream big and leap into a life you love? Don't let the expectations of others choose for you. Step out of your comfort zone and learn how to create what your life looks like. I'll take you on an inspirational journey, helping you tap into the wellspring of your inner strength, get clear on your life purpose, and unleash the vision you came into the world to share. On Living Marvelously, you will learn about personal development, self-care, and spirituality. And together, we will connect with others, sharing their unique energies, and learn to create a world that allows everyone to shine. Living Marvelously starts now. Hello, everyone. I'm Lori Jonas, and you're listening to Living Marvelously with Lori Jonas on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with me for the next 30 minutes as we discuss setting boundaries. So be sure to join me every second and fourth Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and we'll have some great discussions on how to use your inner power to make your life marvelous. All right. Today, we're talking about a topic that is crucial for making your life marvelous. It's setting boundaries. You know, whether it's saying no to some extra commitments or just protecting your personal space or setting boundaries to help you maintain your mental health or to live more authentically. Let's talk about all of that. And maybe we're and we're going to talk about how how to deal with people who push back when you set boundaries. And we're going to talk about what you're going to set boundaries around. So we've got a lot to get to in the next 30 minutes. But first, I always like to make sure we're on the same page. So what are boundaries and why are they important? So think of boundaries as the the protective shield around your energy. So just like a beautiful garden needs a fence so that the critters don't come in to keep out all those unwanted visitors, and and you want the flowers to thrive, your personal boundaries help you flourish. Because without them, we risk really depleting our energy and losing our sense of self and really feeling disconnected from our true desires. Because we are all energy beings and beyond our physical bodies, we've got this incredible energy buzzing inside us, influencing everything we do. And it is our vibration and how we connect to the world around us. So just like we take care of our bodies, we also need to protect and preserve our precious energy. And I've done this experiment before with you, but I just really love it so you can feel the energy that's around you. If you just put out your hands and just notice, feel, think, or feel into the top of your hands. And can you feel some energy swirling? You know, I've done, like I said, I've done this before and just making sure you understand how we're all connected and that energy is swirling and, and reaching out to other people. But that's the energy you're taking care of. So when it comes to our daily interactions, we can classify people into two categories. There are energy givers and there are energy takers. Energy givers are the individuals who uplift us and inspire us, while the energy takers are those who leave us feeling drained and exhausted. (laughs) If you know anything about human design, which I absolutely love, our energy is, it's how we connect with everyone. And when you're not using your energy correctly, it's going to drain you. And when you are doing the things that you love, your energy is just going to shine. And that's the kind of thing that we're talking about here. It's protecting that. So understanding the difference between those two types of people can help you manage your energy levels and improve your overall well-being. So energy givers are individuals who exude positive and leave you feeling invigorated. They're typically solution-focused and have a can-do attitude. When you interact with energy givers, you feel inspired and motivated to take on challenges. And these individuals tend to be genuine and authentic, and they radiate positive energy. And my whole goal in life is that I am an energy giver when I am doing these shows. I want to inspire you. I want to give you energy to go out there and live your most marvelous life. But examples of energy givers include friends who are supportive, who are encouraging, colleagues who are solution-oriented and collaborative, 
or family members who are positive and uplifting and they just feel good to be around. So on the other hand, energy takers are individuals who drain your energy and really feel you leave you feeling exhausted. They tend to be pessimistic. They often complain or criticize. So when we were talking about energy givers, we were saying that they may be colleagues who are solution oriented. Have you ever worked with somebody who just complained all the time, who is always complaining about what the people they work with or the people, the, their customers or their clients, but they never like gave a solution. Like they just wanted to complain about all the things that are bugging them, but there's no solution to how they can make it not bug them anymore, right? Or even family and friends who just complain about how people treat them or or whatever it is, but they never come up with some kind of a solution. Like, well, maybe I need to do something differently. That's the difference between a giver and a, and, and a taker. So examples of energy takers include friends who are constantly Are you ready to create colleagues who are always negative? Create your marvelous life. Family members who are needy or demanding. But it's important to be aware of the energy givers and the energy takers in your life so you can manage your energy levels effectively. Because spending time with energy givers can help you feel more positive, motivated, while limiting your interactions with those energy takers can help you conserve your energy so you have more for doing the things that you really love to do and to be with the people you love to be with. So here's some tips for managing your energy. Surround yourself with positive and supportive people. Set boundaries with energy takers to limit your exposure to their negativity Practice self-care to recharge your energy levels and focus on solutions rather than problems to maintain a positive mindset. I did a little poll on one of my emails recently where I had to, I was in a situation where I was, heard some people next to me, but I couldn't leave. Um, and they were complaining a lot about being sick and how all, all these people around them were getting that same disease and they were getting sick. And I was just trying to find a way to get back into a positive state. And for me, I, because I couldn't leave the situation, I had to like just sort of close my eyes and come into a, a meditation of you know, just coming back to myself. But the poll um, asked, you know, different ways. How do you preserve your energy? And the, the number one uh, thing that people checked was they surround themselves with positive and supportive people. And I think that's, it's easy to do um, if you, because you can just walk away. You can just walk away from people that aren't creating that positive uh, energy environment for you. Okay, so let's get into more of the boundaries. So one of the biggest ways to drain your energy is by not setting boundaries. So I have learned in my life several boundaries that I need to have. I know that I love my personal space and I need alone time in order to be available for others. So if I'm entertaining people at the cabin or all the kids are home for the holidays, I'll always take a few moments during the day just to be alone and to come back to myself usually means that I'll write or I just catch up on some things that matter to me. But most of the time, other people don't even realize that I have taken, I've slipped away and taken this little time for myself. But then when I'm done, I'm re-energized and I'm able to be a better host. Another example of a boundary I have is, is saying no to people or things that do not fit into my day. I tune into what my body needs, whether it's downtime, exercise, time for living marvelously, social time, work, etc. I listen to my gut and say no to invitations or requests that don't feel aligned. So I'm learning to not think I have to do everything that others want or expect me to do. That's a big one. That's a big boundary. And we're going to talk more about that. But before you can set your boundaries, you need to first understand what you're protecting, what truly matters to you, what are your non-negotiables, and what brings you joy and fulfillment? What do you value the most? So here are some examples of non-negotiables and some values. So 
these non-negotiables that we're going to go over today come from a post I wrote about self-care habits, but they're going to give you some some ideas of what you're protecting. So maybe some non-negotiables for you are that you meditate for five to 10 minutes a day, and you're going to protect that time that you do that. Maybe it's you drink a glass of lemon water every morning. Maybe it's you exercise for 30 minutes. Uh, Maybe it's that you decide you're not going to drink alcohol anymore or um, journaling in the morning. It's maybe it's cooking, making sure you're eating one meal at home every day. Maybe it's getting your reading in. Maybe it's making sure you take a walk in nature every day. Maybe it's it's that you really love to get facials or you really love to get your nails done or getting a pedicure and you're going to protect that time that you set aside to do that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, maybe it's you write for 30 minutes a day or you work on some hobby that you really love that you're trying to make into more of a career for yourself, but you need time to practice setting aside time to do that. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's um, maybe staying off social media. Um, There's so many things. I think some of the big things that we really want to set boundaries around are um, when you need to have time alone, um, when you want to do some things that you really love, so your hobbies, your work, you know, setting boundaries of when you're going to work. Because I think what happens is we decide this is, if you can get clear on what you really want in life, right? One of my biggest things is you have to know what you want in order to protect that boundary to get there. So if you don't really know what you want, you don't even, you don't even know what you're protecting. But if you know what you want, like for example, Um, Let's just use you have you want to start a new business and you know you want to be successful in this business. So you need time to work on that business during the week. Maybe you have another full time job. So you need to after hours work on that business. You might have to say no to people a lot more than you used to. You might have to tell people you can't help them as much as you could. You might have to just not be available. And that can be really hard for both yourself and others. Okay, core values. So also what you're doing is you're protecting the core values that you have for yourself. And core values allow you to prioritize what's important to you. To spend your time and energy on things that nurture your values. So things like acceptance, balance, calm, trust, strength, freedom, abundance, success, fitness, health, leadership, learning, bravery, determination, imagination, and so many more. So for example, if your one of your core values is health, maybe a part of that for you is that you've decided not to drink alcohol anymore. And so one of the boundaries you have to set is that you're not going to allow other people to peer pressure you, or you're not going to put yourself in situations that that people are drinking a lot, and maybe you just have to decide to say no. So once you've identified all these core values, then you got to communicate them clearly and confidently. And it might feel uncomfortable at first, but remember, you are worthy of respect and consideration. So here's a real simple framework to help you get started. Be clear and direct. Um, Use statements to express your needs. For example, I need some time to recharge after work. So I will be unavailable from 6 to 7 p.m. Stay firm. People may push back against those boundaries and be like, oh, just this one time, can't you do it? And you're going to say, nope, I can't. I need that time from 6 to 7 p.m. Practice self-care. Setting boundaries is really an act of self-love. So make time that for activities that nourish your soul and make you feel good and replenish you and then seek support from people around you. Surround yourself with people who respect those boundaries and really encourage your growth. 
So there are so many benefits to setting boundaries, but we need to take a break right now. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of those benefits and some ways for you to challenge people who are challenging your boundaries. So we will be right back. All right, welcome back. We are back on Living Marvelously with Lori Jonas. And I want to encourage you to go to my website, livingmarvelously.com. I'm actually at 299 blog posts, (laughs) lots of information to hopefully inspire you and encourage you to go after, unleash your greatest potential and live your marvelous life. I'm really thinking about my 300th blog post and what I'm going to write in that one. So stay tuned. But let's get back to boundaries. So there are many benefits to setting boundaries that help you live this marvelous life that you are creating. And first, setting boundaries significantly significantly improves your mental health. Because when you can establish clear limits, you reduce the amount of stress and anxiety in your life. You're not worried about when you're going to get something done. You're not worried about how people are going to, well, you hopefully setting boundaries. You're respecting yourself with these boundaries and you're not worrying about what other people are going to think because these are your boundaries. You're no longer worried about over committing or feeling overwhelmed by other people's demands. And that leads to a calmer, more centered state of mind. With clear boundaries, you're better able to protect your emotional well-being because you're not taking on the emotional baggage of others, which allows you to focus on your own needs and feelings. And, And this can lead to decreased anxiety, depression, overall better mental health, Um. And then next boundaries lead to better relationships because when you clearly communicate your limits, it fosters mutual respect and understanding. Others know what to expect from you and they're less likely to overstep. So for example, like when, if, if your partner knows that you need to be, need some downtime when you get home from work, he's not going to plan things during that time. And that just leads to better communication, leads to better um, knowledge of each other, knowing what each other wants and respecting that. By setting boundaries, you also teach others how to treat you. You learn to respect your, they learn to respect your time and energy, which can lead to deeper, more fulfilling connections. And it's it's a way of showing that you value yourself. And then it encourages others to value you too. And it might also encourage them to value themselves as well. It's really goes full circle. They see you doing something. They're like, oh, I like what she's doing. I can see a difference in her. I'm going to try that too. And one of the most immediate benefits of setting boundaries is that you gain more time for self-care when you can say no to things that drain your energy. Going back to those energy givers, energy takers, when you can say no to those energy takers, You open up space for activities that rejuvenate and energize you. You know, whether it's reading, exercising, spending time with people who do make you happy or pursuing a hobby, having that time is crucial for your overall well-being. One of my um, biggest platforms as well is to not let other people's expectations of you run your life. So by setting these boundaries, you're sort of saying, you know what, I know you really want me to do this for you, but I have set aside this time to work on me. And so that's not going to be possible. You're going to have to figure out either how to do that for yourself or find somebody else who can help you. I think that's so important. You you get to decide. You are in charge of your life. You have the power to decide what makes you happy and what you're going to do. So setting boundaries helps you helps you communicate that. All right. Setting boundaries is you know going back to that piece of of saving time for self-care because self-care isn't selfish. It is absolutely necessary. Because you're prioritizing your own health and happiness, which allows you to show up as your best self 
in all areas of your life. And every time you set a boundary, you're affirming your worth. You're saying, I matter and my needs are important. And this can be incredibly empowering and can lead to greater confidence in all aspects of your life. Okay, I know I just gave you a lot of information on setting boundaries to protect your energy and what truly matters to you, but I also want you to be careful that you are not setting so many boundaries that you are not allowing space for the unknown or for new opportunities to enter your life. One of your non-negotiables should be to try new things and to pay attention to your intuition because we really need to leave that open to let the universe guide us. If we're setting so many boundaries that we're like, okay, I have to do this now. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to say no to everything else. Sometimes something's going to come in. You're going to be like, oh, I need to leave a little bit of room open for these serendipities, for these synchronicities, for these things that are coming into my life that I need to be paying attention to, that may lead me to what I need to achieve my dream. So just to be careful about that, don't set so many boundaries that you're restricting anything that could really elevate your life from from coming in. All right, moving on. So now we're going to talk a little bit about pushback from others. So have you ever felt guilty about saying no to people or felt a little fearful about setting this boundary? Because sometimes when you set a boundary, you're like, okay, like we said before, six to seven, I am not available. I need this downtime. And then, of course, the next day, somebody's going to say, hey, do you want to go to that concert we've always wanted to go to? It starts at six. And you're going to be like, crap, I just set this boundary and now I really want to go to this. Absolutely, 100%, you should go to that. These boundaries are not, um, they're not uh, laws. They're not going to make anything, um, you know, nothing's going to happen to you if you if you don't have it. But maybe you're going to say yes, because it's something you really want to go to. But maybe you still need to, you you want to honor your boundary and you're going to stay home, but you feel really guilty about saying no. And it can kind of feel like walking a tightrope. You want to protect your energy, but the guilt and the fear of confrontation can really make it challenging. So you have to remember that you are worthy of respect. You're worthy of space. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the show, think of boundaries as this loving fence around your garden. They protect the beauty within without shutting others out. So to overcome this fear, really use some daily affirmations that remind you of your value. Try saying, I deserve respect and I deserve peace every morning. Picture yourself setting a boundary calmly and confidently, and this mental rehearsal can really ease the anxiety of real-life situations. And be gentle with yourself. It's okay to feel uncomfortable at first, because growth comes from stepping out of your comfort zone. I did a whole show on comfort zone. It's so important to, to really notice that. People are going to push back, so stay consistent as much as you can, but know that you can be flexible. Um, Express your needs and reasons calmly. I need time alone to recharge so I can be fully present with you later. Um, Of course, surround yourself with people who respect your boundaries and uplift you. Uh, Let's see, how to handle boundary violations. So despite your best efforts, boundaries can sometimes be crossed. So you know, just remind people of your boundaries and say, I've asked for space during my work hours. Please respect that. Outline the consequences of these continued violations. <laughs> you know, we're not teachers, but, you know, just to be careful. Um, So, you know, remember setting boundaries is an act of self-love. It's about creating a life where you can thrive, where you can be filled with joy and fulfillment. And you have the power to shape your reality And that's what we're talking about here. It all starts with honoring your needs and your desires. So start with figuring out what your non-negotiables are, figuring out what your values are, and figuring out what you are protecting. 
All right. This is what's going to help you live a life that makes you happy while respecting and giving space to everyone else to do the same, right? Everyone should be doing this for themselves. We are at the end of the half hour here, so I need to wrap up, but I just want to say that this is all about self-love and it's about creating that life where you can thrive. So keep shining your light and never forget that you are deserving of all the respect and the peace that you seek. So thank you for tuning in to Living Marvelously today. I hope I've inspired you to set some boundaries that you can live your best life. Reach out to me if you need more help. I'd love to help you. And please join me every second and fourth Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Next time on Living Marvelously, I'm hoping to have a guest with me, Heather Orangia. And we're going to talk about self-care for women who feel overwhelmed in midlife. And I will see you then. Thank you for listening to Living Marvelously with me, your host, Lori Jonas. Tune in next time to unleash the marvelous potential in every woman. Every second and fourth Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as I help you choose a life that you are passionate about. Learn to embrace your unique self, dream big, and leap into what you choose to have your marvelous life look like. Together we create a world that allows everyone to shine. For more information, visit livingmarvelously.com. That's livingmarvelously.com. See you next time on Living Marvelously.